Today is uh, Saturday, uh, June 12th, I think. And, but um, today is day 99 since uh, my wife and I started uh, self quarantining. Uh, we're in the tri state New York area. And um, I thought it'd be a good time to kind of do a quick review, a beginner's review of this Ninja 400. Um, with the perspective of a beginner, I am a beginner motorcycle rider, as you'll probably notice in my riding. I got the bike about 10 months ago. I got my motorcycle license about 11 months ago. Most of the reviews that I see on YouTube for the Ninja 400 have uh, the words beginner, is this a good beginner bike, or am I going to outgrow it? Is it good on the highway? But most of the reviews are from folks who are not beginners. They're either veteran motorcycle journalists or fairly experienced riders on 600cc or 1000cc motorcycles who've had a few years of experience and usually the reviews are very solid. But I haven't seen any reviews from true like beginners. Uh, I know I've owned the bike for 10 months, but with uh, East Coast winters, I haven't been able to ride all winter long and then COVID-19 hit. So I was busy with uh, work and transitioning from working from home, making sure my family was safe. So I didn't really start to ride again to maybe four weeks ago when the weather started to break and we had days like today. Oh, my turn signal's on. Nope, we'll go straight. So I have a series of videos that I have uh, in my mind that I've uh, put on a notebook uh, that I'd like to film this summer on the weekends and days uh, when I can get out and ride. Uh, just kind of chronicalizing the journey of uh, a beginner motorcyclist as well as some other content like this Ninja 400 review. Um, so let's get specific about the bike. Uh, I bought it brand new. Out the door price was $5,026.35. That includes the price of the bike, all fees from the dealership, taxes, etc. So Literally five thousand twenty six, and I think for that price, it is a steal. I feel like I stole this bike. The sticker, I think, with ABS last year was close to was it like five thousand two hundred? I forget what the MSRP was on this bike. 
but it's steel. I mean, after negotiating the price down, it was like $39.99 and, uh, for the actual price of the bike. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, folks say you need to get a used bike for your first bike. And I can see why some people say that. Um, get off and just kind of walk through. Oh, I forgot to take the vest tether off. I'll review that one day as well. Let's take a look, quick look at her. So 2019 Ninja 400 ABS model. Uh... I discussed on the pricing, what I paid, out the door, and I love it. I think a um, couple things. Uh, so I, I'm not going to have too much context on other motorcycles because uh, after I took the MSF course, um, I was evaluating whether I was going to even buy a bike, whether I was just going to do track days and... Uh, rent motorcycles. There's a few track day organizers on the East Coast uh, like Evolve GT and a few others who rent out Ninja 400s or Yamaha R3s for uh, like $400 for the day on the track and um, what happened was I went and did a few um, well I actually only did one but Kawasaki had a Let the Good Times Roll demo day at Motorcycle Mall in New Jersey and I thought to myself last uh, summer fall after I got my license why not take advantage of manufacturer demo days test out a few bikes just kind of evaluate if I'm gonna rent or buy um, and I remember uh, going to that demo day I, the first bike that I signed up for was the uh, Kawasaki Z400 pretty much mechanically the same bike as you're looking at right now but um, more of the naked version uh, liked it a lot it was very easy to ride um, and it was a very safe environment uh, where they had a police officer in the front of the uh, group and we had about eight riders go out follow the police officer um, as safe as you can get as a, as a new rider on the streets um, but they had a gray and green color combo Ninja 400 that I really wanted to test out um, and compare. And uh, walking up to the bike, the handlebar position is not too sporty. Uh, I sat on the Ninja ZX6R, uh, which is the 636cc uh, super, uh, sport bike. And that's a little bit more hunched over and you're a little bit more on, on your wrists. But if you look here, it's on clip-ons, but it's a little bit higher than a normal 600cc Super Sport. So you're a little bit more upright. The seat is fairly low. I think it's like 30.5-ish. Um, so I'm 5'7", on a good day 5'8", 32-inch uh, inseam, uh, and I can flat foot both feet. And it was very, very comfortable. Um, and I really fell in love with the bike. It was very easy to manage, uh, but uh, you're still able to get some power out of it, and you can go like 75 miles per hour without ringing the engine all the time. Um, not that I know the difference, right? Like, uh, other than the Z400 and the Ninja 400, the only other motorcycle I've ever ridden was the Suzuki 150. Uh, at the MSF course and th those bikes are garbage uh, You know you can imagine they're out there every weekend every weekday with new riders abusing the clutch abusing the brakes um, However, I thought that was actually a good way to learn right so when you're taking the course You're gonna have to learn how to manipulate the clutch learn the friction zone uh, learn to use the brake properly so that bike the Suzuki 150, as bad as it was, it was a good way to learn. Um, let's see, so I can't give you too much context of other lightweight class bikes, but I'm pretty sure the Yamaha R3 is a great bike as well. Um, I don't think you can go wrong between 
uh, the Ninja 400, the Z400, the KTM 390, um, and there's a slew of others. Like I think uh, the BMW G310R uh, is also a great bike. I have ridden that um, real briefly, but I, I'm going to do a more in-depth review of that uh, in the coming days. Um, but I chose the black color scheme with ABS. I thought it was really uh, a great color combo as far as just being very sleek and sporty. Uh, I haven't really done any mods to the bike uh, other than the double bubble zero gravity windscreen and frame sliders. But uh, today I'm going to just give uh, a quick you know, commentary about the bike as a beginner rider. Um, let's see, how many miles do I have on this? This is kind of embarrassing. I've owned the bike for 10 months. I have 118 miles on the clock total. And out of that 118 miles, probably 40 of those are in parking lots like this. Uh, I've been practicing a lot of uh, slow... Um, maneuverable type drills like Moto Jitsu and uh, I have a uh, personal one-on-one -on -one trainer who I've hired um, and he's given me some drills to practice in the parking lot as well and a lot of it has to do with slow speed control and getting uh, really good with your clutch your brakes um, and just building confidence that way but um, this bike has everything you need uh, to get started as a beginner rider and I don't see any way that I'm going to grow out of this. Um, now, keep in mind, you have to look at why are you getting the bike? Um, are you, let's see, are you getting the bike to commute? Are you getting the bike to do track days? Are you getting the bike to do 150 mile per hour blast on the highway, which I don't recommend you doing, but I love watching those videos. Um, so you have to ask yourself first, what are you getting the bike for? Um, so for me, uh, I wanted to get the bike to learn on, number one, to get proficient on slow speed, local roads, uh, to the point where I can start to take uh, classes and courses like uh, Yamaha Champ School and Champ Day, uh, do track days like Evolve GT uh, on the East Coast. And I, I wanted to keep my uh, public road riding to a minimal because um, I don't need the bike to commute. Um, and I'm pretty much uh, using public transportation for work. And right now with COVID-19, uh, as, as everyone else is, uh, is trying to work remote. So this is a 100% education tool for me, a fun tool, and hopefully once restrictions are lifted and tracks are opening up, I'll be going to track days. Um, let's see. Oh man, it looks gorgeous. Uh, love the look of this bike. It doesn't look like a 400cc bike. It, it looks uh, pretty sporty outside of the lifted handlebars. And from this view, you can see that the handlebars are a little bit uh, higher than a typical sports bike. And th that just helps in the comfort uh, of everyday riding or just uh, riding in general. Um, so with that said, uh, you know, what is this bike not good for? I would say if you're into... Uh, high torque type riding where you're on the highway and you're doing like uh, 70 miles per hour and you need to pass a lot of traffic and you don't want to downshift and you just want to roll on throttle in six gear it's not going to have the pickup that some 600 cc uh, or 650 cc class um, sports bikes will have um, you know from from the factory it's like 45 ish horsepower it's got a little bit more horsepower and torque than the r3 because the engine is a little bit bigger it's um basically 399 cc's um the other thing that this bike will not be good at is you know uh you're going on the highway you're on the entrance ramp you're tucked in and you just want to blast through traffic and get up to 150 miles per hour again this bike 
tops out at 120 ish miles per hour I've never been that fast um, I'm just going on reference from YouTube videos and track day videos uh, so it's not going to get you to 150 and uh, it's not going to be that highway monster but that's not what I need um, you know I, I, again I've had this bike for 10 months as a hundred and nothing miles um, so that tells me I need to practice more uh, a little bit on the back roads uh, before I do a track day but um, I'll, I'll try to post videos of uh, basically the the moto jitsu white belt blue belt brown belt course and my friends and I practice here uh, because school is obviously not in session with COVID and I just uh, think it's a good opportunity to get better in your riding um, but today I'm gonna meet up a friend uh, we're gonna go a little bit on a like a 12 15 mile ride grab lunch uh, and then uh, call it a day but uh, I'm gonna just kind of give you some thoughts and you can see the ride um, it's a great bike it's not just a great first bike it's a great bike and um, I'll post some links in the description but if you look at uh, Moto America racing um, there's a whole class where Ninja 400s and R3s are battling it out uh, I'm pretty sure that those riders are faster on this 400 than the majority of all of us on YouTube on a 1000 cc bike and you know for me even with cars I, I'm really into cars the fun for me is in the twisties and the turns you know anyone can just mash the gas in the car uh, or you know uh, go wide open on the throttle and, and, and go fast straight but um, it's really fun in the twisties this bike it's super nimble super light um, I mean it weighs 350 pounds wet fully fueled um, that's lighter than some 600 cc's bone dry it, it, it's it's really a fun bike it's not intimidating um, but uh, you'll get kind of a, a sense of what it's like as a beginner who's only done 118 miles in their lives so what I'm doing now is uh, I don't know if you can see it in the mirror but I'm wearing a airbag vest jacket from Heelite called the Turtle 2. This tethers right here and uh, the other end of this tether is uh, wrapped around the frame of the Ninja so there's no GPS sensors or anything like that. If, um, if I go off the bike this vest is going to inflate. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna make my way back. Meet up with a friend. And go for a little bit of a ride. Man, the weather's perfect today. Right now, it's probably like 65 degrees Fahrenheit. The stock windscreen, I don't know if it was an afterthought from Kawasaki, but that was really the only thing that I had to change ASAP when I got the bike. Um, it seemed like the wind was just hitting my chest, uh, even at slow speeds. The zero gravity double bubble is great. Even like just cruising around, does a good job of wind deflection.
so yeah I mean for everyday riding the Ninja 400 is awesome it's got great suspension straight from the factory it's sporty but it's not so sporty that you're like rocking your spine and what I love about the Ninja 400 is that you can really get on it right like you have six gears You can run through all the gears you don't have to be blasting you know 100 miles per hour to have fun there is a saying and, and I agree with it, it it's more fun to ride a slow bike fast than a fast bike slow and if you if you know you've never been on a motorcycle the best way I can describe it is obviously most of us have driven a car and I've had a few high horsepower cars like a Corvette with close to 700 horsepower at the crank and it's just not usable like right now I'm doing third gear 30 miles per hour I can switch to second but I'm not like breaking the law I'm kind of ringing it out And this can easily go 120 miles per hour uh, I'm sure it can't get to 120 as fast as a, a R6 or a 1000 cc motorcycle but again I'm, I've only been on a bike for 10 months but this is a very capable motorcycle uh, if you watch some of the uh, reviews like with Cycle World or Motorcycle Online with Adam Wahid or Revzilla they go on the track and just rip it and I think Adam Wahid while talking into his GoPro was consistently doing 2 minutes and 7 seconds around Sonoma Raceway I don't think I can get even close to that no, that track time so for now this is more bike than I even need I really don't think I'll outgrow this now will I add a different type of motorcycle to the garage who knows maybe I'll get like a cruiser or a cafe of some sort doing 40 cruising no issues if I roll on throttle here, let's see how much, what I can do. Oh, now I'm 33. Not bad. You know, like local roads. Like, what more do you need? If I if I was on a Yamaha R6 right now, or a Kawasaki ZX10R, this the, I'd be doing 100 miles per hour here, or. I'd be bogging the engine down so for like back roads and twisty roads these 400cc class motorcycles like the Ninja 400, the R3, KTM 390 uh, are great bikes not just for beginners but even for seasoned veteran riders because it's light it's fuel efficient it just leans over telepathically man the weather is perfect today now when you look at the other options you have one thing I didn't discuss is buying a used bike so I paid 5026 out the door some of the other bikes that I was shopping was the R3 brand new but I was also looking at pre-owned 
Ducati Monster 797. Uh, brand new, they're like 11 grand. Uh, Ducati of Manhattan had a had one that had like 30 miles. They're basically new, or like 100 miles, just like this bike. And they were selling it for like 8,900. Uh, and I found a gentleman on Craigslist out in Queens that had one with like 300 miles and he was going to let it go for $6,900 cash. I really wanted that bike. I was, I was like itching. I was borderline going to get it. It's got about, I think, 65 to 70 horsepower, the Ducati Monster 797. And it's got more torque than the Ninja 400. Um, it was a sweet bike. It was white with the red trellis frame. That was probably the closest I got to buying a different bike than the Ninja 400. But with that, with you know, track riding in mind, uh, and the fact that I was able to get this out the door for five grand, I just couldn't resist the deal and I don't regret it one bit because the money I saved I could have poured all of that into gear and that's another thing right if you're a beginner rider or even like an advanced rider I see a lot of uh, experienced riders skimping on gear and uh, I made sure I had enough budget to get the bike but also to get one-on-one -on -one training uh, to continue my education and get the high high quality gear to just try to stay 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 safe out here on the roads. It's an easy bike to learn on. Easy bike to rip it. are pretty loose relaxed my wrists are not feeling any pressure you know it's like a, a good intermediate riding position that feels comfortable sitting up I only weigh like 150 160 pounds depending on on the week uh, but the, you know the, the seat uh, forward to aft has enough room for me to kind of like scoot back and lean and lean over or hug the tank uh, I think uh, if you're taller maybe like I would say north of like five foot ten six feet this bike might be a little bit cramped but anything under five ten uh, whether you're a lady or a man it's a great bike I don't care if you're a beginner rider who's only ridden 130 miles or you've ridden a million miles this is a sweet bike so I always find it funny when you know a lot of reviews on YouTube are clickbait saying is the Ninja 400 a good beginner bike and usually you'll see folks who have like been very experienced reviewing it uh, and they'll say yeah don't start on a Ninja 400 don't waste your time just get a 600 and you can you can get like you know a used r6 for like seven grand you get a used kawasaki ninja zx6r for like seven eight grand uh but the beauty is i i, I left the dealership five grand uh and if i sell this bike tomorrow on craigslist i'll still get at least three grand Right, like if you lowball me, what are you gonna lowball me? Three thousand? I'll probably get thirty-five hundred on a trade-in. So my advice is, if you're gonna get something in this price range, 
Just get it new. So take me back in the day When it was all so easy 